leading people. It's important to adapt your leading style, your leadership style, to each individual. And actually, it goes more detailed than, than that. It's, it's down to each major task that each individual has. So it may be that uh, one person, in order to produce the status, weekly status reports, they don't need any supervision at all. You can delegate it fully to them. But in creating a marketing plan for the department, it's something that they haven't done before and they're going to need a lot more hands-on management. So it, as you think about managing people, it comes down to individuals and the tasks assigned to them. With each task that you assign to an individual, what it's important to think about are two things. Their motivation to take on this challenge and the experience they have in doing this sort of thing. And what I would ask is, is you think about for each individual motivation on a scale of zero, one or two. Zero is they're not motivated. So someone motivation zero, they really aren't interested in doing this task. So perhaps with a particular employee, they don't want to be the one that creates the status report for the weekly team meeting. Or you have asked them to do a, a, a client visit and write up a report on how things are going and they're really not motivated by that. They prefer some other aspect, perhaps the technology is something that turns them on. So zero is that individual is not motivated by this task. One is there is some motivation there. It's not that they're jumping up and down, it's not that they're asking you, please, please, can I do this? But they, there is a desire to grow. And two is you can see fire in their eyes. They really want to, to do this. Perhaps it's an area that they really want to develop for their future. Perhaps it's a type of work they really love. In my case, I remember when I first started at Accenture, programming computers was something you didn't need to, to manage me to do. I loved doing it. I would do it in my spare time at the weekends. So my manager looking at me while he hands me a programming task would see me light up and, and be excited and almost have to hold me in the room to explain the full project before I could go out and start playing with the computers. Because in my mind it was playing that I was doing when I was programming. But if that same manager had said on Friday, instead of programming, I want you to spend the day with the rece accounts receivable team drawing a process map of how they conduct the process at the moment, the fire would have gone out of my eyes because it was not something that really motivated me. So with each task and each employee, it's important to just think about what level of motivation they have to get this activity done. And same for experience. And again, we have a zero, one, two scale. Someone who's done many years of this, you know, perhaps someone on your team has been creating the minutes for the team meeting for a couple of years. They do it well. Uh, their experience is two. They've got three or four years of experience doing it. They've got the template. They know what goes in there. They know what doesn't go in there. They don't need to ask for help. Maybe there's someone who's just started on the team, they've never created minutes and they don't know what, the, what it quite looks like, so their experience is zero. Maybe there's someone on your team for a programming task that they, they really haven't got a background in this, they don't know the language or they're not programmed this particular language before, so their experience is zero, or one or two. So you need to think through What's, what's the skill level of this person? How much experience are they bringing to get to this particular activity? And your score for each activity in each person, you know, where they are in motivation, zero, one, or two, where they are in experience, zero, one, or two. And this will give you some. So perhaps you have someone who's zero and zero. Let's move that on to our, our management matrix. So you've taken a particular task and an employee and you've, you've done the sums and you've looked at how their motivation is to do this particular task and how their experience is to do this particular task. And maybe 
the sum of motivation and experience is zero. So you've decided this person is not motivated by this particular task and they've got no experience, which zero plus zero leads to zero. And if you faced with an individual on your team that is not motivated and does, have, does not have previous experience, there's nothing you can do as a manager to get them to do this well. So a zero is a HR problem. A zero, there's no management that you can do to get good work out of this individual. And it's a waste of time giving this piece of activity to that individual employee. So your best decision, if this is a very important piece of work for the team, is to give it to someone else. And if you don't have someone else to, to do it, you need to replace this individual on the team. Because there's no short or long term solution on, under which someone who is not motivated and doesn't have uh, a good level of experience is going to be able to contribute anything worthwhile to the team. So if it's zero for motivation, zero for experience, you need to find someone else to do this work. But let's say they've got a little bit of motivation but no previous experience. Or the other case, they're not really motivated but they've been doing it for long enough that they can, they can do it fairly simply. So perhaps it's the case of pr producing minutes from team meeting. The individual's not motivated, but they know generally what it looks like. In which case you've got a one as the sum. In the case of one, we move to micromanagement. In the case of micromanagement, you're going to have to supervise quite closely. You're going to have to set the activity weekly, set the timing, and describe how you want it done and audit and look over it. And anyone who's in this one level, whether it's because their experience is zero or their motivation is zero, it's going to be hard work. So micromanagement is not something you have an enormous scape to be able to do much of. So the only reason you will allow someone to be in this micromanagement level is because either something is going to change or you can see a path for them either to be more motivated or to gain the experience to be able to do it unsupervised. So your objective is to move people away from micromanagement and move them to level two. So level two is perhaps there's a little bit of motivation, a one score in motivation, and a little bit of past experience. A one and one gives you two. Or maybe it's someone who's young, who's, who hasn't done it before, but is very, very motivated to learn. Because their, their motivation is two, but their experience is zero or somebody who's not very motivated but they've been doing this for a long time and have a great deal of experience and know how to get it done. In which case, your, your score is to two. And at two, an activity in an individual with a score of two, you can manage. And in the case of manage, you're delegating the how to them. So the individual, it's up to them to decide how they want to do it, but you keep control of the when and the what. So it's the status report, I want it 10 minutes before the team meeting on Friday, and I want it to look more or less like what we've always had, but it's up to you when and how you do it. Or marketing plan, uh, you set the, the when, it's due in two weeks time, the what, it's a marketing plan, I'd like it looked, to look somewhat like the template we did last time, but you leave it up to them to come to you with the how. But you're available for helping with the how, but that is delegated to them. So in the case of management, you are still keeping control of what is being done, you're still keeping control of the deadline, but you're passing over the day-to-day -day work on the project to the individual. And again, this with the accountability question needs to be reinforced each time they come to you, you're pushing back the problem to them. What else do we need to do? What other things could be done? What do you need to get it done? And anyone that you're managing, you really want to be looking at how you can move them to level three, because level three is where you can lead. And the key here, at the management level and on the micromanagement, this side of this quadrant, you have a scarce amount of energy and time to dedicate here. Once you move your employees, the people reporting to you, over into the style of leadership of leading 
or fully delegating, you can start to have many, many more people on your team because they're not sucking a scarce resource that you have in terms of energy, in terms of time. So leading, if, if you look at a task, and this, this task and person, they're highly motivated. They're really motivated to learn, or that, and there's a little bit of experience. So you've given them two on the motivation, you've given them one in terms of experience. Three, you're leading. And in the case of leading, you're handing over even more responsibility. You're delegating the what, you're delegating the when, you're delegating the how over to the individual. And you're being there just to make sure that they are being supported to remove obstacles and help them be successful. So your role is no longer manager, but moving more to coach and pushing the ownership of, of all of the task over to the individual. And if you've got an activity where someone is fully motivated, motivation level two, and they've got plenty of, of experience, experience level two, you start to get to four. And with four, you can delegate. And ideally, you want to move everyone into this phase, into delegation, into you're handing over full control and you're trusting. You're trusting and doing some regular verification. Important thing, in delegation, the difference between an employee, a team member, feeling that they've received something delegated to them, or the negative, they've received it dumped onto them. It's a very different feeling as a, as a team member to have something dumped onto you. And the big difference between dumping and delegation is in delegation, you tell the individual, I have specifically chosen you, I trust you to do it, I'm here if you need anything, but I know you could do it better than I can do it. But you need to come back regularly with praise. Let them know you're aware they're working on it. Let them know that you think they're doing a good job. Dumping is a very horrible feeling. It feels like the, someone's just passed, thrown the work over at them because they don't want, you don't want to do it yourself. And having something dumped on you is a very unhealthy feeling. Having something delegated to you and someone look you in the eyes and say specifically I've chosen you because I know you can do this better than I can. I trust you to come to me if you hit an obstacle, if you need some support to think through the problems, but don't, uh, I trust you to get it done. I'm not going to follow up, I'm not going to check up. This is, this is yours to get done. And when you get your team into leading and delegating as the main styles, that you're working with them as, as the team lead, you now are freeing up your time to really look ahead. You're not stuck in the details of day to day and you're going to start to be able to look ahead and create time to really make those that work for you successful. Because I think the real job of a leader, a great leader, is someone that everyone underneath them is even more successful than they are without you as the leader. And that can only happen when you start to move most of the activity that is being done by your team into these modes of leading and delegating and giving you the time and the energy to look up, see the roadblocks, remove the obstacles, praise and reward and really boost the team into, into a high performance team. So these are some important things to think about as you're giving the work to each member of the team. And each activity and each individual team member will need a different style in terms of how you relate to them and how you help them take responsibility for their work. The objective is always to be moving people out of micromanagement into management, out of management towards a style of leading, and as soon as possible moving them from leading to a style where you can delegate. Delegation can only happen when the individual team member is motivated and they have enough experience to know more or less how to get the job done. So your job as a leader is to make working on their motivation and working on giving them the skills so that they can be a two, two person, giving them a four and keeping them in the delegate box. If you can achieve that, you're gonna be really successful as a team leader.